So welcome. Welcome to a new horizon. And um, this was an appropriate start of it. So it was the music called Silence from Thomas and uh, Vaselina. They, they make music, one on the say, grand piano and the other one on the marimba. And this was the piece called Silence. So I thought it was so beautiful and so gentle and so still that it fits perfectly with the idea of God is and God is one. So that's so lovely. So thank you for um, say joining today. Thank you for joining in the in the new horizon based on the book of Joel. It's right here. Um, based on the book, um, chapter eight, so the four last chapter, and uh, this this chapter is called God is one. God is one. God is one. And well, that's that is. Now, what are we going to do with that? What is Joel going to say about that? Uh, because God is one. God is one. It's all inclusive. It doesn't have exceptions. It doesn't have opposing power. It doesn't have other parts too. No, it's totality. And it's you. So how are you going to share this? How are you going to teach this? Well, to become still is one way. You see that with the idea of silence. It's like, yeah, I, I get the idea. I get the idea. It's so still and so all-encompassing. All it's beautiful. It's so great to, to, um, to, to deeply go into that and take time to, to be in that silence. And so still, just completely relaxing into it. So God is one. And I'm starting to get curious what the publisher is going to say about it in the, in the preface, in the foreword. So I'm going to read that to you. So what does he say? Chapter 8. God is one from living the infinite way. Illuminates a prerequisite teaching of the infinite way message there is no selfhood apart from god since god appears as this universe this chapter highlights that god is and god appears as your being my being joel felt these two words is and as were the two most important words in the teaching. Is and as. God is. Appears as. Like that still is in, in any kind of uh, idea of form. Is that still an interesting expression? Appearing as. It's like yeah, it appears as. So what's, what is true about an appearance? Nothing but it can appear as so as a reflection of godliness you could say as a reflection of godliness so we use this with an idea of a real world of the world behind appearances then you still look at it in the sense of god appearing as like if i'm sharing words that relate to you in a true sense you you see that it's god appearing as god being brought into expression uh, just like this, it's like appearing as, ex bringing to expression as, and not that I bring anything to expression, no truth expressing itself through me, I have nothing to say about that, it's like it's, that, that is an, an, an extension of truth, I'm, I'm an effect of cause, I'm an effect of source. Now these, these things are very fundamental of course, and very um, essential that's why you can imagine why in chapter like this uh, is is in this book because these are the recommended chapters or the the chapters where there's something really fundamentally is being shared with you and god is one 
God is cannot, yeah, it has to be a part of it since it's everything. Now this is this is great. So a new horizon starts right here. That's a new experience of yourself. In fact, a recognition of yourself as being all, being everything. And and this becomes more and more interesting, even in your spiritual awakening too. I like to give some examples of that because I was uh, said that came to me to share. And and that is this, for instance, you you know the idea of a horoscope, you know, you 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 know maybe you're familiar with some terms out of that like um, the sun the moon saturn um, pluto um, you name them venus and all these beautiful planets within our milky way um, so here we are um, it's like all these things in your horoscope represent a part of you right it's like the moon is the mother your mother probably your moon is in the same sign as your mother has in your description in your definition of yourself the father saturn um, is in that kind of aspect now you see what i do it's like i i connect it to an say a symbol or part of my dream saying that's my dad that's my mom that's my but who is it in fact like what is the totality of this this is you all these aspects that you have divided yourself into relationships situations mm, taboos um, ways of communicating um, subconscious activities um, you name it you know all these aspects that you see in the horoscope you see all these things back but they're all representing the totality of you now this is really interesting so as if you look around for just a moment say all the so-called people that you were in relationship or, or are in relationship with or see there's there's no accident in that and so this person that you might first really look up to is like oh my god that's that would be my perfect lover for instance why because some certain aspect is so feeling like making you whole in your idea about yourself like you want that to be part of you you're in relationship with that you take that to yourself in that sense first as a separate idea and same as your mother and your father it's like saying first as a separate idea but then you recognize oh my god i'm so like them i'm i'm so like the essence that I was looking up to from this person actually represents a part of me that I so much love and that part of me is what I am it is it is not separate from me so it's like you could say like you internalized it but in fact where did it start if you are the cause of all of it if you are in your appearance as like uh, become the expression of that so your totality is being represented by all these aspects from your uh, yeah from your life and the more you integrate the more you integrate the more you in fact dissolve with the different aspects and see that they're all part of you as a totality you also see that there's no uh, limit to it that there's no boundaries that there's in fact um, no more a separate uh, representation but a total integration now this is really interesting so it just came to me um, hmm. it came to me because of the idea of god is one and also the appearance as like you have you have representations of that what is so dear to you and you call it another person but in fact there is no other person since you're one so you cannot assume a separate identity because there is no separate identity there's no distinction between the ones that you're meeting or the ones that are dear to you and you there is no um, say there's no distance between it no it's a representation of the totality of you in other words you're all of it now let's see what joel shares with us today 
um, since this is pretty specific chapter just like the the others too but this one is like really different uh, since in fact you you cannot speak about god is um, we say like god is and then we cease to speak like we stop speaking there are no lips to speak of what god is since god is everything what would speak of that well everything yeah well, that's about it then <laughs> So I'm curious what Joel is doing with it today. God is one. I think I have to go up. Yeah, here are some expression. Uh, some scripture. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord, is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. And then, of course, we have our Thou shalt love thy Lord, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Okay, so that's like God is one. And the totality of your love is what God is. And there's no other God and there's no other love for anything else in fact this is the only place where love is where God is okay we'll, we'll come back to that probably it's like with God is one there is only one activity one being one cause one power one love God is. There's only one activity, one being, one cause, one power, one law. The one law is a law of love. It's not a limitation of any kind. It's an all-inclusive totality. God is. Okay, diving into the practicality of it. Well, welcome Joel. Here's Joel bringing us some, some practical, uh, mystical Christianity, you could say. Some practical spirituality, as it says in the book too. It's like some sp practical spirituality. Since there is no power, so it has consequences. Since there is no power apart from God... There can be no sin, no evil. Since there is no law apart from God, there is no law of disease, law of lack or limitation. And we no longer have to turn to God to overcome those things, to help us rise above them, to destroy, correct, or remove them. Okay, so what do we do then? If we don't do this, what do we do then? You ask. There's no power apart from God. There is no sin, no evil. And there's no law apart from God. So there's also no law of disease, lack or limitation. And we no longer have to turn to God to overcome those things, to help us rise above them, or to destroy or correct them or remove them. None of that is necessary any longer. Mm. So... Yeah, how do you how how do you deal with this? God is it has no point of comparison, since it is always, eternally, and immortality is. Spirit is. Power does not oppose. All that God is, I am now. So what do you do? You're going to throw the book out? <laughs> You're going to throw the book out of the window? And something like, okay, well, I don't need a book either then. Like, there's nothing I need to do. God is already. Everything is represented in this moment. So what am I supposed to do now? Like, how am I going to do this? 
And then, in fact, we'll come. Probably Joel is going to share something about that. Uh, I read. I will read some of it in the book. But it's like that is an idea so far. And this is an idea. God is is an, is a concept in our minds. Um, in this stage of our transformation, God is is like yeah yeah God is. Um, but you don't realize what it actually says. So now this is exactly where. Yeah, the infinite way of being or the infinite way is for like you sink deeper and deeper and deeper into this so that it reveals itself to you in order for you to have it like literally realized in you because we can we can share concepts that's easy and you can suggest them you can forget them for for some time you you can consider them you can uh, start to teach them you start to come into the recognition of them. You start to have that be revealed to you. And suddenly, shum, there you go. You get what it says. You get what it says. And it, it is like, oh, I cannot say anything about that either. It's like, I cannot say anything about it. Oh my God, God is now. I get it. I get what that means. Like, yes, absolutely. Is there anyone to explain it to? No, there's nobody to explain that to. No, is that is it to realize? Yes, is that an individual recognition? Absolutely. Absolutely. I cannot share about it. Literally, I cannot share it in the ways that I, uh, say, communicate with human beings, so to speak, or with, with others on the path. But when I experience it, it communicates by itself. It is literally you step with me into this recognition or into this realization and you start to experience it too. You, you say, start to communicate as one because literally there is only one. There's not other activities. There's not something else going on too. So it's the recognition that we are one. So that we idea is, is more like communication is whole communication has to be whole to be true and whole i mean it is not going from a to b and b to a no it's instantaneous complete and whole it has nothing to do with any kind of ideas i hold about communication great god is and then we stop speaking about it in fact so you see you don't have to do this there are no laws that are in opposition to this there is no other world that is in opposition to the totality of the universe we call God. Uh, or yeah, you can call it the universe. It's not appearing as the universe. It is what the universe is. Yeah, the totality of you, the totality of God is what the universe is. Not the stars and the, and the moon as you see them. No, I'm talking here about the universe. The totality of your being. See, it's unexplainable. So that makes it an, a very mystical chapter. And it's only in, say, in deep, deep uh, invitation for an experience to come so deeply into your love for God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. If you, if you say, keep that as your activity, you keep giving this to God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you open your consciousness for it. Suddenly you find yourself in this communication. There's just no other way. It's like, it's not that you did it. No, you gave it everything. You gave your love. You gave all your love. And then suddenly something happened, unexplainable. But you find yourself in a deep sense of communication in light in wholeness, in fourth dimensional consciousness, whatever term you use, I don't care. But the experience is uh, fundamental. Now, this is a high goal. You don't get to this in the first moment, mostly not, in the first moment that you start to meditate. 
So that's why we say this is a process and we go do these exercises, we keep our practice, we keep bringing this in as constant reminders, like God is, oh yeah, God is. No, no, there's no opposite. No, there's no, there's no law of disease. There's no law of this or that. No, 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 no. There's no law of justice. No, there's only one law. It's called the law of love. God is. And it's absolutely, uh, you cannot do anything with it. Or you cannot do anything for it. And this is the greatest frustration, in fact, in the spiritual path, like the total frustration of not being able to do anything. Now, that's, in fact, an, an incredible devastation. I'm not able to do anything about this. I really want to do everything for it, but I, I can't. I cannot bring myself there. I cannot, um, say, do my things better, my daily things better, so that God will reward me. No will not work either. So to overcome this deep sense of frustration, you could say, this deep, deep, deep uh, yeah, resistance to letting go of your idea of accomplishment, your idea of strife, your idea of uh, setting goals in the future to, to work towards something, it all makes no sense and has no influence in it whatsoever. Does that stop you from doing it? No. You cannot help yourself. It's like you, you can't do it better than you do. So you do it with what you do now and you think that works. And in the end, it's like in the end, it will work, but not in the way that you think it will work. So it, was it for nothing? <clears throat> was it for nothing? No, you had to discover that you had nothing to say about it, that you had that you could not influence it or control it in any kind of way. Like, if God already is and there is no opposing power, that is true right now. And, and it will for always be true. Literally, it created you as you are, not as you see yourself. Now, this is the only step that you take, the, the transition from how you see yourself as who you are to the realization of what always has been and what you have always been. It has no point of comparison since it is always. So it has no progress either. It is not like, okay, now I know better that God is. Or I start to, I think it started. No, no, it was always already so. It's like that's all not very popular in, in that sense, in the spiritual transformation. It's not popular. Now it's like there's nothing for you to do. Do you come to the realization? I need to do nothing. That's really what this is. There's no opposing power. All that God is, I am now. It doesn't need to be accomplished. It is already now. It is accomplished. It is accomplished in you. Let us understand that anything of what we can become aware. I said, oh, this is not from now. No, this one shouldn't be there. Sorry. So the God is, it has no point of comparison since it is always, eternally, and immortality is. Spirit is. Power does not oppose. All that God is, I am now. All of the conversation of humanhood is about appearances. So it is useless trying to talk, argue, or reason this out with them, like to reason this out with them. You cannot discuss it with friends and relatives, as Joel says. Now be still and know, but be very still. Be very still and spiritually know that this is the truth. There is no law of disease. There is no evil. There is no power that can harm. Spiritually, Joel says, feel the rightness of this. If you feel it spiritually, you are praying a right rather than praying a miss. If you can feel the rightness of the one law, of the one presence, of the one power, 
that there is nothing to overcome, nothing to destroy, nothing to remove, then you will know, I already am. It is. God is. Harmony is. Okay, so Joel shares here, personally, you could say, I have had my own inner experience with God, with the realization of God, and with the actual feeling of the presence of God. But I cannot make this real to you. How could not, many could not even believe that I have had the experience. So unless you have had some measure of God experience, how could you possibly know if I'm telling the truth? or whether I, myself, might not be mistaken. I know I cannot convey that knowledge to you. See, that's interesting. So we come, come back to that too. And here's one more. I have but one wish, Joel says in the last paragraph of the chapter, I have but one wish for the students of the Infinite Way and all others on the path, and that is not that they accept what my experience in and with God has been, but that each one may himself experience God, know God, feel God, love and understand God, and finally realize Godhood. So that's Joel's wish for you as students of the Infinite Way or on all others on the path. Realize Godhood, experience God, know God, feel God, love and understand God. So you see, it's like, so what are you going to say about that? It's like, yeah, that's, that's my wish for you, of course. It's like, yes, I want that for you. Now, like I said, that will come to you. So you, you cannot really force it in any kind of way, or you cannot... Yeah, can you speed it up? No, you can. You can. What you can do is become still, like be still. Say, follow this. Do this. Relax into this. Let this affect you. Like all the things we say during meditations. Let it affect you. Let it have an incredible impact on you. Let it completely confuse you for a moment. Allow it to touch you in a way that is completely discombobbling. Or, yeah, so, so you, you get your uh, possibilities, in fact, since you're, say, you're being guided in this, in this whole setup, even though it might not look always that way, but you're completely guided, you get all the situations possibly that you need to recognize that God is. Everything is working towards that for you to realize. Like there's a whole perfect plan working you. You could say that is that is taking place right now and it's based on an idea of no you don't have to do that no you don't have to do that no you can let go of that no that's not it either relax into that and don't resist that just let it all be in fact resist not evil um, and on and on and on so everything every aspect of of your awakening is you come to realize Oh, another thing I don't have to do. I don't have to do that either. What is left? Well, Gethsemane is left. <laughs> you could say, that's the only thing that will be left. You sitting there in the garden, thinking that everyone left you, and thinking that nothing is working, that you're absolutely out of con contact with God, and that God is not doing anything either, and, and here you are. This is, in fact, the place that you're going to be, say, yeah, guided to. It sounds weird, but it is really true. It's like you, you come to that. And what happens then? Well, it's not the end of the story, of course. It's like we know the story. So it's, it's not that you have to suffer in order to come to the realization that God is. No. The whole story of Jesus, in that sense, was an, an say, extreme example of uh, making clear that 
And there's no such thing as death. That you, th If you think that you can terminate life by killing a body, that is not true. So it goes beyond that, because we know the one basic principle behind God is, is immortality, eternality. Like it's, it is not stoppable. No, you're still caught in the dream if you think that you're alone in this in this universe, you could say. Or you can turn it around 180 degrees to say, yes, I'm literally the only one. I'm literally everything that seems to be occurring or not occurring. Like I'm completely connected with every aspect of it. I'm not going to let myself be tempted to make exceptions or to think, well, that's not part of me or well, I keep that for myself and I... No, you, in, in your undoing of this, in your spiritual development, you discover all that makes no sense. Literally, the only thing that's left is your recognition that you're completely connected with every aspect of creation. So that's, that's God is. So we can go back to the... Um, I wanted to say more, a little bit more about the, um, say the next, uh, no, the, the scriptural uh, expressions that we shared. So, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord, is one Lord. Like it's, it's a totality. That was clear. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, thy soul, and with all thy mind. So that is nothing, but in fact your invitation to totally love God, even though you don't know how to do that or what that's supposed to mean, it doesn't matter. This calls for something, for an action on your part. When you do that, like then at least you're open, you could say, to receive something else. And that's sufficient to let something happen, to let something come to you, not that you decide that it comes to you. No, you're open to receive that. It is always with you. Thou shalt love none other gods before me. Now that's of course like any form, any form of God. Um, I, we we used this the other day. It's it's been a while, but it was more like. You obey the God that you believe in. That's inevitable. Like in the old days in scripture, okay, you have you come into a country with a thousand gods and you say, well, Peter, Peter I think Peter it was that said, no, there's only one. You can throw all the other uh, sculptures, all of that, you can throw that away. There's only one God. And this God is how, uh, om, yeah, omnipotent. It's like it's all powerful. It represents all of these other. And so it's like that. That comes back in scripture like that. And um, so, how is this for you? How are you going to? What are your gods? What are the gods that you are obeying? And that's a really good question. It's like, what is, which God are you obeying? Um, if you obey the one, then you're free of all. <laughs> and if you still say, obey another God, then you're immediately bound by that God. It cannot not be so. Like it has to be so. It has to be that way. And there's no, yeah, there's no exclusion. So any temptation to think that there's another God would bind you to something that isn't God, even though it seems a temporal uh, fulfillment for you. But it's not. So here we go again. It's like what what where does this end then? Well you in quietude, in, in the moment that you come in your Gethsemane, where you sit and and all by yourself realize in fact this this is it, this is all there is. There's not something else either. I don't want to go anywhere else. This is where I sit, this is where I am, and this is where everything can become revealed to me. Because I I see that I, yeah, I, I said it the other day with an idea of, 
you walk through the clouds, you walk through the fire, you walk through earth, uh, for, on, on, on earth, and suddenly you end up under a tree not being able to go anywhere. And, and this is really something else, it's like you come into the realization that you have no place to go. In that, that moment can become real and whole in itself. And you realize that you are, by not being able to go anywhere, that you in fact are everywhere. See, it's all attempts to express this. So it's all experiential. It's all experience. And that's what I love about this. And that's what Joel tries to express. He wishes you the best with your experience. So it cannot be mine. I'm, I'm in no way can I convey this to you. So the best thing you can come up with, in fact, sharing the Christ vision, sharing in the sense of, say, uh, helping to see this isn't it, that isn't it. Can you see that it does make sense that it, that isn't it? Are you willing to accept that, that this isn't it? Are you willing to demonstrate this, that that all is not it? Are you allowing yourself to be still and listen and, and come into a whole different experience of yourself we call knowing? Like that knowing has nothing to do with intellect or with knowing scripture or something like this. It's like no, knowing is the realm of knowing in which you know, in fact, in a, from your connectedness with what everything is. Having your God realization, your self realization. In that, you know, like you know there's no differences, you know that all is one, that everyone is already there, you could say, that you come into an experience that everyone is represented, and that you cannot miss out. No, you were it all, all along. You just divided it into particles like bodies, um, locations, events, time, space, and you name it. It is for this reason that we must learn and understand the instantaneousness. Instantaneousness, like it happens instantaneous, not tomorrow, later, or in a moment. No, instantaneousness, immediately. And the spontaneity of healing and reformation, since it can only take place now. What great fact do we discover? Above all, we discover that I am. I am now. And you will ask, what is I am? That you must learn from within. But one thing is certain, if I am, all that the Father is and all that the Father has is right now. In that I amness. All that the Father has is now. All that the Father has is mine now. All that the Father is, I am now. If you are able to follow this, Joel says, you are feeling why that is just is again, is. Not to be hoped for or not to be prayed for. No, it is. It's happening now. Why not? Because in this now, there's only one power, only one presence, and only one law, which I am. All that God is, I am now. So far as we know, Joel says, the Master never prayed for anything for himself. Can you understand why he never seemed to have a need? If it came to healing, he could heal multitudes. If it came to supply, he could take care of multitudes. At no point was he seeking to get or to acquire. The Bible states that he was an hungered, that he was tempted to turn the stones into bread. Why was he tempted to believe in lack? Was he tempted, was he tempted to believe in lack? No, he was not. He recognized his fulfillment. He recognized his divine sonship. He recognized that all that the Father had was his now, and that he did not have to make it. It already is. 
get thee behind me, Satan. Get behind me. The temptation to believe that I can acquire something a minute from now, when in this nowness is my isness, it is now. I am. All that God is, I am. So we will become quiet with this. We have, of course, our um, tabernacling coming up. And it's a great idea to already start it. Why not? And uh, if you want to participate in it, um, please do so. If you want to leave it, that's perfectly all right, too. So it's like this is the only thing that's left to do, in fact, in the experience of, of the idea of God is. If you want to experience that, it will come from within. You, you cannot experience it in another way than from within you. And let's take some time to, to be quiet and still in that. Thank you so much for joining today in the God is chapter of uh, the New Horizon. So this is opening up a new horizon also. It's like all these aspects of it be is are part of the whole. And now we're entering into, in fact, what wholeness is. Uh, at least we come, uh, become familiar with the idea of that. And seeing how all-encompassing it is, it literally has no exception, no matter what you think is going wrong or is a problem to you or or shouldn't be there or is not acceptable or is painful or is who knows what it is. No, no, it is a different story altogether. Now, so thank you so much for joining today then in this uh, discovery which it really is. It's like a discovery of what always has been and always will be. And what is all yours at the same time. So thank you so much for uh, say, for being part of this and for watching this. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.